Alrighty guys, so variables, loops, functions, conditionals, etc. All of these are in every programming language that you will ever use. And these are the universal programming language concepts that can all be explained in give or take under an hour. They're all pretty simple. And if we go on YouTube and look up how to code, well, you can see that there is no shortage of people explaining the basics of a given language in under half an hour or if not 30 minutes. All right, but I'm sure they would agree that that's not really where the difficulty in programming lies. The difficulty is how to combine and link these operations in useful and more complex and clever ways to accomplish a goal. Which brings me to my next point, and that is, I'm not here to waste your time on the nuances of language syntax rules. Certain languages like Python, Java, C Sharp, JavaScript C, etc. All of these languages give you a bunch of syntax rules. So let's go over a few. So this is an example in Java. And you have to start memorizing when we're not to put semicolons, right? These here. There are places where they're invalid and there are places where they're valid. Uh, where and we're not to put parentheses. Where and we're not to put curly braces and what they do. Classes and access modifiers in the case of C Sharp and Java. So this class keyword here, this public keyword. Uh, where to hit certain tabs and spaces in the case of Python, one might argue that you don't need these curly braces and stuff. But Python, you need to be very sort of aware about where you put your tabs and spaces because they create what is a scope, which I will go into later. Uh, where, to, where to type certain keywords in certain spots. So class, public, static, void, yeah, it has to be here. A return type has to be here. Uh, the type has to be here, um, etc. The list goes on. So while these rules aren't really that hard, they're rather simple. You'll eventually learn them as a beginner by slogging through error messages and trying to you know slowly fix them together. If you remember your first time programming, that's how everyone starts off. But I argue that more importantly, all these rules are getting in the way of the pure essence of problem solving. Because as a beginner, you just want your code to run. You don't want to need, you don't want to learn how to really memorize all these rules and slog through error messages trying to learn where to put these really specific keywords and things. You just want to get your code running in the really shortest and concise way as possible. Which brings me to the racket language. So instead, we're going to use a programming language called Racket. And it only has about one main syntax rule. So let's go over it. So here is open parenthesis, the name of an operator, a set of arguments, and closing parenthesis. Here in line two is an example. Open parenthesis, the name of an operator, plus, and a set of arguments, one and two, and then followed by a closing parenthesis. So I'm pretty sure what you guys, you guys can guess what this means, uh, what this produces. This produces the number three. And that's more or less it. This is the main language rule that you have to memorize and it will do us well in covering all these concepts. They're universal to every programming language. And if you want a language hop from Racket to any of these languages, it's easier to learn Racket first and then hop to these languages than it is to start off with these languages right off the bat and learn all these rules. I can guarantee that. For those who still are complaining about the language choice, right, it's not that popular as Python or JavaScript and they're really good beginner friendly languages already, et cetera, et cetera. I'll leave you with this analogy. So spelling is never the hardest part of writing an essay. All right, spelling, as here's a lot of misspelled words, is never the hardest part of writing an essay. It's making sure, what's more important actually, is making sure that your sentences make logical sense and that your overall essay is useful to your readers. So I wanna focus on this more than, of course, the spelling, all right? 
can easily language hop again. So with that out of the way, you may be wondering, where is Rocket used in the industry? Is this just a toy language? Well, here are some examples of it being used and in an industrial professional setting. All right, so here's Rocket used at Naughty Dog Studios uh, from for using for their games, The Last of Us and Uncharted. Uh, this is for their programming uh, context dialogue system. So here's Rocket in action. Here is um, their animators using it for animating characters, uh, using Racket to script character animations. Here's John Carmack using Racket as a scripting language for virtual reality, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right. So as we progress through the course, you may notice that there are a lot of parentheses, and I will briefly cover this. Uh, there's a good reason for that. If you're new to programming, don't worry about that. Come back and read these articles later. But if you already have had some programming language experience and you're wondering why is this language designed around parentheses, well, here are a lot of articles and videos and links below that I will link in the description somewhere for your further reading. Anywho, that is about it for this video, and I will catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching, He Man. If you wish to interact with more of your kind, join our Discord link in the description or on screen. If you want to aid in my quest for world domination, consider hitting the sub button. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it, thumbs down if you didn't. Any questions, comments, or suggestions, fire away below. Also, check out the annotations on screen for the next relevant video.